it's Louise, and today I am joined by Matt. Hello, Louise. Hi, and today we're going to be talking about the fact you've been playing Devil May Cry 5. Yeah, I have. <laughs> and you liked it, right? I really did like it, yeah. It's um, it's really, really good fun. It's, it's very stupid uh, yes. in exactly the right way. Um, and as the title of this video hopefully has suggested, yes. it made me feel quite cool, which, as you well know, is not something that happens very often. Yeah, you never <laughs> feel, you shouldn't feel cool. But today we're going to be talking about the six ways that Devil May Cry makes you feel amazing, mm -hmm. and one way that it doesn't really so much make you feel amazing, but we'll talk about that at that the very end. That might be me personally. That could we'll be, this that. could be Matt. However, let's start off with the fact that every single time you get into a fight, which obviously when you're playing Devil May Cry 5 happens a lot, it feels great. It does, and the, the thing you said about it happening a lot is also really interesting because um, they're really good at rationing them. So the feeling you get is like you get these little pockets of, of kind of conflict where you're fighting loads and loads of monsters. And all the time, like, because this is a game that's sort of so absurdly stylish that you're trying to make all your combos look cool, mm -hmm. you want the game to shout at you that your combo was brilliant rather than, like, if, if it's bad, you get a D for dismal. And it's like so the worst thing you, you D know, for depressing. Yeah, you get kill loads of monster, monsters and then a, a guy just shouts dismal at you, which is rubbish. So... Um, what you want is to obviously feel fantastic and you kind of like you're, you're especially with Nero you're kind of zipping between monsters and kind of knocking them into the air and shooting them and knocking them down and using all your special moves and you're kind of perpetuating these combos as far as you can so when you get to the end of that if you haven't done as brilliantly as you'd like all you're thinking is give me some more demon insects to kill which is a really good fun thing to, to, to sort of to be pushing you through the level I think before we get on to the next thing Devil May Cry 5, does anyone need to have played the previous ones? Is it a continuation? Do we think we can just get away with it? It is, and it obviously features all the same characters as well as some new ones. Um, but I think if you're coming to this fairly cold, it's still sort of... Um, the story is well told enough and the characters are, are relatable enough that um, that you really don't need that kind of wealth of information. I think you will definitely, definitely get more out of it if you've played all those previous games and you love these characters and you want to know what's going to happen to them next. Um, but truthfully, as sort of like a, a person who's kind of familiar with the series but isn't like a diehard fan, I found it really easy to get swept up with it, which is a good thing. Devil may cry. So another way that you might sort of take in the story and experience this world is by stopping and looking. And you said that stopping and looking at the world is one of the best bits about it. Yeah, it's, I mean, that also is quite a surprising thing, I think, for a sort of an action game. Um, but, like, it is a really interesting kind of uh, dense and sort of oddly beautiful place. I mean, it's, it's sort of, it's London and it's kind of fallen apart and it is kind of sporadically horrible. So you kind of go into some areas and they're kind of all choked up with, like, these sort of monstrous roots and there's kind of these awful kind of squiggling seed creatures that you have to use to progress further into the level and there are bits of it obviously that are kind of fleshy and disgusting but in quite a uh, like an aesthetically pleasing kind of way so that kind of mix of like this sort of demonic undergrowth and like a, a recognizable city because you know there are there are red phone boxes and kind of dark satanic iconic, mills and stuff iconic london elements yeah too. yeah and i, I kind of like that it's a thing that's sort of immediately recognizable um and like I, I did find myself stopping and sort of panning the camera around because you know perhaps because the fighting is so good the tendency is just to push through and see the next thing but like it's a, it's an interesting and beautifully designed place so another thing we're talking about was the sort of sense of humor involved in devil may cry I mean, it's kind of silly. Oh, it's so silly. And I absolutely love how silly it is. Like, it's the first sort of few times you see, like, you know, some someone get their head blown off and there's, like, a quip, and you're like, wow, that's that's kind of cheesy. But then the more it happens, the more you realise that actually, like, this is one big tongue-in-cheek joke, and you're all in on the joke, and that's a really nice feeling. Like, the... I think my favourite example is the is, is is Nico's sort of Devil May Cry weapons van. So at any point you can kind of you know use one of the red phone boxes to call this van. Of course, and it always like no matter where you are will will sort of like drive off a roof above you and drop down next to you, which feels like it could be you know it could become like a fantastic meme of just like this truck appearing from nowhere next to you. Um, and that kind of sort of typifies the sense of humour in it, and it kind of. It all looks really, really cool. Yeah. Like it's people, you know, cool looking people doing cool things, but in a way that's like, you know, we know this is kind of silly. Just enjoy it, go with it. Yeah, and we know. I totally did. We know games are silly when they're like, here's all of these different things you can use as weaponry. And for something to arrive like a Harry Potter night bus, <laughs> like an actual <laughs> truck in London, I really like the idea of that. 
Another thing, in terms of the characters, obviously we have new characters, we have old characters, and did you get to play as everyone? What was your experience like? Um, I personally didn't get the chance to play as Dante. We could have done. Um, I, I ran out of time, unfortunately. But um, I did get to play as uh, Nero and as V, the new character, who I'll talk about in a bit on his own because mm-hmm. he's brilliant and interesting. But like generally, I think the characters, like again, that's one of the things I particularly loved about it. The facial animation in it is really, really good. So you get a sense of who these people are. Um, and I think it kind of the sort of more sneering kind of in-jokey, like, quippy stuff works even better because you know they look like real people see faces yeah. it's not yeah. just hair i mean they have great hair let's <laughs> just take a moment hair. to really really appreciate devil may cry 5's hair it's a wonderful thing just look <laughs> Okay, that's probably enough here. <laughs> um, so we've talked about facial animation, talked about how much we relate to the characters in a, in a weird, funny way. But let's get on then to V. Who is V? Why will we love V? Um, so he is sort of your, in keeping with the kind of tropey stuff that we've talked about so far, he is the sort of stereotypical kind of mysterious character. I think, you know, some people familiar with the series might have some thoughts about who he might be. Interesting. But the presentation of him in this game is sort of, he sort of looks like the kind of guy who'd run like a like a shop where everything's made of hemp. Yeah. He's kind of like, a, you know, he wears sandals, he has a cane, and that might sound absolutely wretched to some people, like, I already hate this guy, but he's, he's brilliant. But he has a lovely. panther, right? He has <laughs> an actual a, panther. He has a ghost panther called Shadow, <laughs> which is, that reminds me of like, one of those jumpers you get with like the wolves next to the moon. I mean, he is like that as a character, and it's fantastic because you he doesn't actually fight, so he will summon these phantoms to fight right. for him. Okay. So like his melee attacks are all mapped to Shadow the Panther, and his ranged attacks are all uh, mapped to Griffin. Okay. Um, so you kind of mix between the two of these, and you kind of wear down the creatures you're fighting with, and then to finish them off, V rushes in with his magic cane and just pierces them through the heart. Which, okay. Um, it just looks so Lovely. cool, and it's it's ridiculous because. You know, he's sort of like he's not kind of hobbling around, but he's much slower than the other characters. Weaker. So he's, he's not, sort of yeah. taking his time. And he's a bit kind of loose and cool. And then suddenly he's kind of zipping, teleporting between monsters and killing them. You can't help but feel amazing. And also he has a button that just has him read a book. I was which going is... to say, <laughs> if anyone has a move of reading a book, I'd like that move. It's lovely. He's just, you know, he just sort of sits there, thinks about things. I mean, I mean it do obviously powers up a gauge because okay, okay. this is Devil May Cry and everything powers up a gauge. There are gauges everywhere. Just kidding. You can call me V. So, moving on, before we get on to the one thing that you didn't love quite as much, let's talk about weapons. This is all about weapons. If there's a truck specifically for weapons, let's talk a little bit about them. Yeah, I mean, this could probably be a video all of its own, but, like, just on a really superficial level, again, like, they all feel just, like, really, really lovely to use. Like, um, Nero has a move where he can rev his sword, um, which is called Red Queen, obviously, because that's the sort of name of... Like a bike. Like a motorbike, yeah. So you're kind of, you're, you know, mid-fight and you're reaching over your shoulder and revving this sword to to power it up, which is just... That's amazing. everything you need to know about Devil May Cry 5. Excuse me, allow me to rev up my sword. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be with you in a minute. In two seconds. I'm just revving. Um, But yeah, like, and there's a load of variation between the different characters and the different styles that they fight with. Um, And obviously, like, quite a tactical element with with Nero's arm in that he has these um, Devil Breakers which are essentially like replaceable arms that do different special moves. So you can kind of swap them out and they're all kind of loaded in a certain order. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you get hit when you're using them as well, you lose them. So there's kind of a tactical element of like, they do loads of damage, but you've got to be careful when you use them. And that's really kind of thoughtful and cool as well. It adds to the whole sort of this rolling tactical combat that's, that's really, really good fun. Yeah, it adds kind of an interesting element. Otherwise you would just be, you know, mowing everyone down and there wouldn't be any thought behind it. So the fact that there are these extra layers sounds ace. And finally, you didn't love the boss checkpoint system, but you will say that it was part of maybe the part of the demo. Yeah, I think there are some caveats with that. So um, I got into one particular situation where I was checkpointed before a boss and I had like maybe a third of my health left, perhaps less. Um, And going into that boss repeatedly and sort of health items being in certain areas only at the end of the fight and things like that made it a little bit difficult. And this really isn't like a Dark Soulsy type kind of game. Like you're able to dodge, um, but you're not really there to kind of you know, again, it kind of harks back to the stuff we were saying before about, like, you know, looking cool. Like, you want to be able to feel amazing. You kind of brute force your way through fights by um, buying respawns with the kind of red orbs you've collected and things like that. So normally, I think if you're playing this game all the way through and you've collected loads of orbs and you haven't, like I did, spent loads of money on getting new combos and things, then that probably wouldn't have been an issue. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it's kind of a reminder that when you are, you know, you do play the final build, 
spend your orbs wisely so you don't get stuck in a position where you can't get past the boss or it's a little bit more difficult getting past that boss than you'd ideally like. Yeah. Okay. Well, largely, Devil May Cry sounds amazing, looks amazing. Just looking at it is enough to make your eyes water. Um, but I guess the last question we have is when is Devil May Cry out? It is out on March the 8th um, and I really can't wait. Yeah. Excited. So um, let us know if you have any questions about what Matt played of Devil May Cry 5 in the comments below. Drop us a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. We will have a lot of previews coming up for this year for the games ahead. And if you do already subscribe, which we really appreciate, please hit that notification bell so that you know when our next video lands.